Here we're going to do a real example of how they determine the reaction order of a reaction. Again, it's a fairly simple reaction. There's only one reactant, uh, dinitrogen pentaoxide, and that's going to dissociate into four uh, molecules of uh, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas. And I don't know if that's balanced here. Let's see here. We have uh, 10 oxygens here. We have 8 plus 2, that's 10. We have 4 nitrogens, 4 nitrogens. Hey, the equation is balanced. Sometimes I don't always balance them when I put it up on the board. All right, so what's happening here? Well, let's say that we're measuring the reaction rate as time goes by. When we first start out, the initial reaction, um, oh, no, I'll take that back. What we're, what we're actually doing is we're measuring the concentration of the dinitrogen pentaoxide in the solution at regular intervals. At the very start, the concentration is 0.1, and that would be moles per liter. And then after 10 minutes, the concentration is down to 0.07. After 20 minutes, it's down to 0.05. After 30 minutes, 0.04, and so forth. So from that, we should be able to figure out the, um, the reaction rate. And the reaction rate is simply the change in the concentration divided by the time elapsed. Now, to get a better reading for that, and I explained that in an earlier video, if we want to know what the reaction rate is for the point here 10 minutes after the start, we're going to take the difference in the concentration between this point and this point and then divide it by 20 minutes. So when we do that, we take the difference between these two concentrations divided by the 20 minutes, we get this as the reaction rate. So that would be the number of moles per liter per minute. That's how fast the, react, the concentration of that reactant is changing. Again, what we do is we take the difference between these two concentrations, and then we divide it by 20 minutes, and we get this as the reaction rate. Again, we do it the same for these two, the difference between those two, divided by 20 minutes, we get the reaction rate at this point. We take the difference between those two, divided by 20 minutes, and we get the reaction rate at this point. So we get more accurate values at that than, than we would if we just took the difference here. So here you can see that that's the rate for this point after 10 minutes, the rate after 20 minutes, the rate after 30 minutes, the rate after 40 minutes. Now those are not exact values, but they're fairly close. If we then graph that, here we have the concentration of the reactant and the time elapsed. And you can see that the concentration diminishes over time. You can see how that now graphs the rate, and the rate is simply the slope at that point, and we've gotten that by taking the difference between those two and divided by 20 minutes, that gives us the slope at that point, and it's fairly close, not exact, but close enough. So what we then also do is we go ahead and take the concentration of the reactant and we square that concentration. So for after zero, uh, when we first start, the concentration squared would be 0 0.01 because 0 0.1 squared is 0 0.01. We take this number and square it. We take this number and square it. So we, we square the concentration of the reactant at the 10-minute interval starting with zero. And now the next thing that we do is if, it's, if the order of this uh, reactant is the first order, then we should see a linear equation. The rate should equal some constant times the concentration of the reactant. If the order is second order, then we should get an, an equation like this, a linear equation again, where the rate is equal to, the cons to some constant times the um, concentration of the reactant squared. So which one is it? Maybe it might even be third order, so then we would have to set up an equation where the rate is equal to some constant times the concentration of the reactant cubed and so forth. And so I'm going to do it for the first two and see if I get the right answer here. So we're going to graph the rate versus the concentration of the first power, the rate versus the concentration of the second power. If I get a line, like a y equals mx plus b line, so we have y equals mx plus b. No, no, if this is so this is relative to the C here. We don't need to know what the slope is. We simply want to know if it's going to be a straight line. We simply want to know if we get a, an equation like a y equals mx plus b equation, and then we know we found the correct order. So what we need to do then is, notice, to find C, we get C is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of the dinitrogen pentaoxide to the first power. We'll do that one first and see what we get. So, we take the rate and we divide it by the concentration to the first power. So this number divided by that number, let's see what we get. So we get 2.235, and of course it's going to be negative, uh, times e, where's exponent, 3 minus. And we divide that by the concentration, so divided by 0 0.0743 equals, and we get 0 0.030. So for, the, for after 10 minutes, 
that ratio will give us 0 0.03. So what we're doing is we're finding the constant for the first point. If we find the constant for the second point, the constant for the third point, and the constant is always the same value, then we know we have a linear line like that. If it's not the same value, then we have a curved line, and then we didn't find the correct order. All right, so now let's find it for the point after 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, the rate is this, and the concentration is this. So divide this by this and see what we get. So 1.675 e to the 3 minus divided by... 0 0.0553, 0 0.0553 equals, and again we get 0 0.030, 0 0.030, there we go, wow, that looks very promising, let's do it again for 30 minutes, so after 30 minutes, the rate is this, the concentration is this, I think I already found it, but let's continue with it, 1.25 e to the 3 minus, divided by the concentration of 0 0.0408, 0 0.0408 equals, and I get 0 0.031, all right, 0 0.031. I don't worry about that one at the end there. That's close enough. That still looks very linear. And what about 40 minutes? And so um, I get this rate divided by this concentration. So 0 0.92 e to the 3 minus divided by, this is 0 0.0303 equals, and back to... 0 0.030. So this tells me that when I plug in, when I divide the rate by the concentration in each, at each point at 10 minute intervals, I get a constant value, which means the relationship between the rate and the concentration is um, a constant. So I know that I'm going to have a, a line like this where the slope of that line, the rise divided by the run, so the rise divided by the run is equal to 0 0.03. And so it looks like I have found the relationship. It looks like the order of the reactant here is first order. But just to see how we do this, what if we assumed second order? So now we're going to do the equation. Let me use a different color so we don't get confused here. All right, let's see my blue pen works. So now we're going to do C is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of the reactant, dinitrogen pentaoxide, to the second power. So here I have the values to the second power. So I'm going to take the, the rate and divide it by the concentration squared and see what we get. So uh, 2.235 e to the 3 minus divided by, and so after 10 minutes, I have my rate, I have my concentration squared, so divided by 0 0.00552 equals, and I get 0 0.040 so after 10 minutes I get 0 0.405 all right so let's see if we get that same value again uh, now we're going to take this rate and divide it by this concentration that's the rate associated with 20 minutes and so we take the concentration squared associated with 20 minutes so we have 1.675 e to the 3 minus divided by um, 0 0.00306 equals, and now I get, after 20 minutes, my constant now is 0 0.547. Hmm, not the same number, so it doesn't look like it's second order, which of course I already knew, but just to see how that works, I'm now going to take my third, uh, my rate after 30 minutes, and divide it by the concentration after 30 minutes squared, so 1.25 e to the 3 minus, divided by point. 00166 equals, and now I get after 30 minutes, that ratio is now 0 0.753, so definitely doesn't look like it's a second order situation here. And finally, we take the rate after 40 minutes and the concentration squared after 40 minutes, so 0.92E3 minus divided by 0 0.0005 equals, and now we have after 40 minutes, that ratio is now 1.840, and you can see it's not linear, which means that I get something that looks more like this. So the rate divided by the concentration squared, as the numbers get smaller, the, uh, hmm, I'm trying to figure out what that will look like. And so we have the rate go from uh, big to small. Okay, even though it's negative, we're going to take the positive value, so the rate gets smaller and the concentration gets smaller, but it looks like the ratio looks like this. It's not linear, so therefore 
We don't have a second order situation. And that's how we do that. So we, that's one of the ways. There's other ways and I'll show you the other ways, but this way is simply calculate the rates of the, uh, of the uh, solution as it's reacting, the rate of reaction, then figure out what the concentration is at the various intervals, then figure out what the concentration squared is, then divide the rate by the concentration, first to the first power, then to the second power, and see in which case you get a linear relationship. Whatever gives you the linear relationship, that's the order. So if we're now going to write the uh, order, so we can say that now the rate of this equation is equal to some constant, that's called the reaction constant, times the concentration of the reactant, which is N2O5, to the first power. It's a first order reaction, and that's how we do that.